here's the deal is it'd be interesting for you to do an audit on the nature of your relationships, and you'll find out. Either they're just kind of casual barbecue relationships. We all have our casual bar. I mean, I've got lots of casual barbecue relationships. I love shallow people. <laughs> Seriously. I love shallow people who can't go deep because they always know where the best barbecue is. And that's important to me. So I love, I got a bunch of those relationships, and my wife and I hang out with them. But I need those deeper relationships where I learned to say, I just really screwed up today, and I need to know that I'm okay. I need, I'm just out of gas. I need somebody to tell me I'm a good person. I just need to tell you that I'm really confused, and I need just, I don't need three points of advice. I just need you to know you're there for me. Leaders don't do that. Here's what leaders would tell me. Oh, I do all that stuff. I, got, I know your energy stuff. I've got God, and I've got my spouse and my lab. And I say, well, let's, let's parse that. Let's unpack that. You got God, which we all have to get. You got your spouse. That's great. Glad you got a good marriage. Your lab, that's what they're for. Let me do marriage 101 with you here in a second. If your spouse is the only person who knows your fears, your dreams, your mistakes, your passions, all that stuff, if they're the one person that you go to regularly for that stuff, you've just turned your spouse into a parent. Not kidding. You've just turned your spouse into the life support system of being a dad or a mom. That's not Bible. That's not New Testament relationships. If you look in the New Testament, it says, all the one another's that give us energy, accept one another, love one another, confess to one another, forgive one another, uh, care for one another, comfort one another, one another, one another, one another, one another. You can't do the one another if your spouse is the only person that knows the deepest, darkest parts of you. Can't tell you how many times I'll have that conversation, and then I'll be out walking around in the foyer, and the spouse will come up to me and go, oh my gosh, thank you for saying that. I love them, but I wish they'd get a friend. <laughs> and the CEO will go, no, I don't do friends. No. I do shallow barbecue. I don't do friends. That's fine. <laughs> one another, one another, one another. And the reason I say that is because once you've got other people in your life and you move out of isolation so that you can say, can I call you for eight minutes? I just, I'm having a hard day. And you get over that, I hate to ask, I hate to ask, and realize that that's not a problem. All of a sudden, the energy comes in. You can say no. So many leaders don't have good boundaries because they don't have that other energy cell of people. They got their faith straight. They work straight. Their service straight. They work out a lot. But they're not asking anybody besides their spouse. Funny thing is, Every time I challenge a leader to do this, they do it, and they come back and they go, you won't believe what happened. I'm like, what happened? People were glad to be with me. They were glad to talk to me. They were like, I'm so glad that you're not Superman or Superwoman. I'm so glad that I can help. And they feel like it's a blessing and an honor. Don't, don't get into the thinking that you're helping anybody but never asking for support. It's actually selfishness. You give people a blessing by asking for support. Good for you, good for them. You know what? When Walt told me I was late, he didn't tell me when I was supposed to stop speaking. <laughs> Walt, he's probably out getting support right now. But um, <laughs> seriously, I don't. I have no idea. Okay, well, how much? I'm time challenged. Five more minutes. My next 18 points, <laughs> are this. Learn to be the leader that is not afraid of working with people whom you frustrate. Learn to be a leader who's not afraid of working with people whom you frustrate. Good leaders frustrate people. People have designs on you, and they have needs for you, and they want you to be there and be there at all their meetings. 
And that's where the no muscle, when you come in, it comes in and you go, no, it doesn't work for me. But we've got to have you in the sales thing. Can you solve this? And you've got to say, yeah, no, that doesn't work. I've got to do other things. And when you can frustrate other people, the right people, really good things happen. And the reason is this, is that people work at the level of which they are challenged, not at the level of which you resource. People work at the level at which they're challenged, not at which you're resourced. We're supposed to resource up people, make sure they've got training and money and time and opportunity. But if you're coming in there because you don't want to frustrate them and solve their problems for them, they never stretch. When you look at, like, neurological training and all this and all the neurology that's coming out there, they're finding out that the brain is a muscle. They call it neuroplasticity, that if you push the brain to do new things, people get better. It's just like you're working out. But what we do as leaders is we make it comfortable for them because we feel bad, we don't want to discourage them, and this sort of thing. You must frustrate your people, not in mean ways, but when you give them a directive, here's the goal, here's the quota, here's develop this part, just make these many calls, handle this problem, and they come to you and say, do the shortcut, you've just regressed your people to a child state. Now... Your B-level players and your C-level players, it doesn't really matter. They're sort of going to be there. But your rock stars, the ones that are really, you want them to take you to the next level, your rock stars are going to leave. Rock stars that are not challenged will leave because they're, they've got what you've got in there. They need that challenge. They need that push, and they need that kind of, I've got to think about it. And so that's why sometimes you have to frustrate them and say, I could probably do this and probably have this meeting, but I think you can handle this. And, you'll, and it's sort of like when, back when they were a, a football player when they were 14 years old and the coach said, I know you're running 100% and I want 120%, right? That's what coaches do. And that kid came up with the extra 20%. When you tell your people that and you frustrate that desire for you to do it for them, all of a sudden they rise to it. They didn't have that stuff in them. Don't be afraid of frustrating your people. Frustration is one of the great things that makes a leader have great leaders. Because here's the deal, guys. Your organization will succeed, succeed not just based on you and your own strengths, talents, and ideas, but on the rock stars you're developing. And when you've got the right rock stars because you've challenged them and you've frustrated them, the sky's the limit. The world needs a leader who is sold out to Christ, 100% for Christ, and lives in reality about money, about performance, about KPIs, about metrics, and their faith is solid and their performance is here and with really good boundaries, sky's the limit. Don't be afraid of this. That muscle will work for you because God made that muscle. Guard your heart and everything else happens. God bless you guys. Have a great conference. Thank you very much.